Today's lecture in anatomy and physiology is on cardiovascular blood. The overview of what we're going to be talking about today includes the cellular elements of the blood, measurement of hematocrit, as well as blood typing and cross-matching. Let's talk about the cellular elements of the blood. So as we know, blood is made up of cells and it's made up of plasma. The cellular, the cellular elements of the blood include red blood cells, which are also known as erythrocytes. They're the most abundant cell in the blood, which is why your blood is red, and they transfer oxygen and carbon dioxide, as well as other nutrients to the tissues. White blood cells are known as leukocytes, and there are different types of white blood cells, as you can, as you, as you can, as you can see here. But we're gonna talk about high yield information here. So the neutrophils are the most abundant white blood cell, and they're elevated in bacterial infections. So sometimes in the hospital you have patients with 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 bacteria in their blood or even bacteria in, in an infection at a specific site and you have you'll measure their blood and they have elevated neutrophils so neutrophils they have they have nuclei which are multi-lobed so the nuclei are multi-lobed that's how you can tell a neutrophil eosinophils they're called eosinophils because their cytoplasm has a pink tint to it and they're elevated in parasitic infections and allergic reactions. Basophils release histamine. Lymphocytes are elevated in viral infections. Platelets play a role in blood clotting. You know, they help, they help form that platelet club, that platelet plug. Whenever you cut yourself, platelets rush in and, and form a plug along with other coagulation factors. And, the, and platelets are cell fragments which are derived from megakaryocytes in the bone marrow. And here's a picture of, of, the, of a megakaryocyte on a bone marrow smear giving rise to platelets. These platelets are just fragmenting off and going into the bloodstream. Let's talk about the concept of, the, of a hematocrit. And as, as, as a clinician, you're going to be checking people's hematocrit quite often, in some cases almost every day. So the hematocrit is the percentage of blood volume that consists of red blood cells. And the way the hematocrit is measured is you take, a blood, take the blood, put it in a narrow tube, and you spin it down in a centrifuge, and then you calculate the hematocrit using the measuring the red column. So in normal people, a male has a hematocrit of 42 to 52, and a female has a slightly lower, lower hematocrit. And the reason that women have slightly lower hematocrits is because, because, they, because they typically have monthly menstrual periods, so some blood is lost from that. So that's, so that's why. So this is the this is the hematocrit. This is the this is the plasma. Basically, the way to check the hematocrit is you take this column, divide it by the height of the total column, and then multiply it by 100 to get your percentage. In patients that are anemic, this red column is going to be lower because you have fewer blood cells. In patients with polycythemia, this red column is going to be higher because you got too damn many blood red blood cells. Let's talk about blood typing because I think it's an important concept. So, the, so blood typing, ABO typing. So the basis is that red blood cells can either can have no antigens or they can have different types of antigen. So they can have so they can have type A antigen on the surface, which makes it 
blood group A. You can have B antigen on the surface, which makes it group B. You can have both antigens on the surface, giving you an AB blood type, or you can have no antigens, which makes you type O. In addition to that, you can have RH typing. You have RH antigen on the surface. It's either there or it's not. If it's there, it's RH positive. If it's absent, it's RH negative. Typically, it's, it's usually referred by just positive and negative. So instead of saying something like A, A, RH positive, you just say A positive. You're not going to say B, RH positive. You're just going to say B positive. So in this case, the A positive has the RH factor present. That's positive, as well as A antigen. The A negative has RH factor absent. So it's just, so it only has A antigen without B, without RH antigen, I mean. Now, when an antibody binds to an antigen, an agglutination reaction can occur. So you have clumping that's seen. And ABO and RH typing involve testing for the presence of antigen A, B, and RH with antibodies directed against these antigens. So if there's if if there's so anti A antibody will bind to antigen A if it's present. Anti B antibody will bind to antigen B if it's present. If there's no A or B antigen, then there's no agglutination in the presence of anti-A or anti-B an antibody. Therefore, the blood type would be O in this case. And the, and the antibody, the antibody is the, ant is the one that's used, used by the lab to test for blood types. So you got your type AB, and it's tested with both anti-A and anti-B antibodies, and there's agglutination in both. So that means it's type AB. Type A, you only have agglutination with anti-A, but not anti-B. Type B, you only have agglutination with anti-B, but not, ant not anti-A. And type O, there's no agglutination in either of them. And it's the same with RH. If RH is present, if RH is present in the presence of anti-RH antibody, it's also going to bind to RH factor. If the RH antigen is absent, then there's no agglutination in the presence of anti-RH antibody. Okay, and this is this is again this is again demonstrated here. You know, you have you have agglutination in the presence of anti a and anti-RH, but none in the presence of anti-B. So your blood type is A positive. You have agglutination in the presence of anti-B and anti-RH, but none with anti-A, so it's B positive. Here you have agglutination with anti-A, anti-B, and anti-RH, so it's AB positive. And here there's no agglutination in any of the samples, so it's O negative. Now let's talk about cross-matching. So cross-matching is basically basically when you determine the patient's, you're not only determining the patient's blood type, but you're also getting blood available to transfuse to the patient. So the rule of thumb is that the person's, that whatever the person's blood type is, the body is gonna make antibodies against whatever antigen is not present on their blood cells. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Like you're not gonna make antibodies against yourself. You're gonna make antibodies against something foreign. So whatever antibodies, excuse me, whatever antigens are not present on the surface of your blood cells are gonna be foreign. So you're gonna make antibodies against them. So for example, a person whose blood type is O negative has antibodies against A, B, and RH because those antibodies are not present on their own blood cells. And that's important because they cannot receive blood from anybody with those antigens on their blood except somebody who is also O negative. Because if you think about it, if they receive 
blood from anybody other than the O negative person, there's going to be a transfusion reaction because those antibodies are going to attack those cells and you're going to get the same clumping reaction in the body that you would get in the, in the lab. On the other hand, if you have a person whose blood type is AB positive, they don't have any antigens against AB or RH because they're not going to make antibodies against themselves. Therefore, they can receive blood from everybody. As a matter of fact, AB are universal recipients, and it says it here, while O negative is a universal donor, they can give blood to everybody. And this is clinically important because say, okay, you got a patient that comes in, they have a gunshot wound, they're bleeding massively, they're bleeding all over the floor. You have to urgently transfuse them. Are you gonna are you gonna wait an, wait an hour to type to determine their blood type and and cross match this patient? Hell no. You're gonna give them whatever O negative blood is available because that's the quickest way to save their life. That's just an example. And excuse my French. And like I said already, it's especially important to know for patients requiring massive blood transfusions, such as trauma patients that are massively bleeding although it can be any patient that's massively bleeding. Thank you very much for listening. Like this video, subscribe.